All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Side Talk, right? Um, today I have, look, I don't even have Marion and Mark um, Satterfield. I well, it's I actually Marion Massey and Mark Satterfield. Oh. Right. Though we're married, we have different last names. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marion, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> So tonight we're going to have a really fun conversation about, you know, um, keeping the man, you know, doing all the right things to keep your relationship intact and, and, you know, doing things like that. So the first thing I want to ask you about is that last name, because when I got married, my husband was like, you better take my last name or else. <laughs> so how did okay, you get yeah. away with that? Well, A, I'll let you handle yeah. <laughs> Mark is my third husband. And we created a course to find the love of your life. And I went through it myself. I'm a hypnotherapist success coach. I've been in business for a long time. This is what I do is I change subconscious beliefs, but I kept attracting the wrong man over and over again. And by that time, I had changed my name twice. And when I met him, I said, you know, people know me. I've written two books. They know me as Marion Massey. Get over it. I'm keeping my name. And that's what happened. It's just I'm not quite that rash, but you know, it's like, that's just the way I am. It's my business, it's my name, that's who I am. And um, that's what we do. Right. So, yeah. For, yeah, so for professional purposes, she's Marion uh, Massey and I'm Mark Satterfield. You know, socially, we just kind of, you know, pick which of the last, <laughs> last name we're feeling at the moment. And, you know, we try to remember which one we made the reservation. I for, know. So. And then a lot of times we were going through renovations where I'd be, you know, talking to the contractor and I'd say, you know, this is Marianne Massey. And then they go, hi, Mr. Massey, how you doing? Yeah. And <laughs> he would just go with the flow. That just shows you that. how confident he is. I mean, it was just, we're just authentic. That's yeah. all. Right. Oh my but God, I love what it. you want to attract because you want to attract somebody that, you know, you're, you're going to be comfortable with. Right. And, you know, so this was a small example. Of, <laughs> right. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So yeah. I think a lot of people would go through it. Yeah. yeah. And I guess pick, pick your battles too. I mean, for business purposes, it makes sense, you know? So I think that's great. So, all right. So let's talk about how you guys met. So Mark, how did you guys meet? Um, we met actually uh, online or in a very, very early version of, uh, of online. And uh, we'd both been, both been married before, Mary and had been, been married twice. We owned our own businesses. And we were at, a, at least, you know, I, I was at a stage where I was really getting tired of casual dating. I really wanted to find somebody that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. You know, you hate, you know, the, the word, you know, life partner is kind of overused, but that's really what I was looking for. And I did, I'd done a lot of work on really trying to identify what was important to me, what, what was not, because, you know, the last time I, I did it, I just kind of went out and use the philosophy of, you know, I'll, Ooh, I'll, I'm attracted. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, it was, you know, kind of, you know, she's cute. And that was, you know, kind of, the, 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 you know, the sum total of, of what I was looking for. And, you know, when you only do it just based on just pure, you know, physical appeal, you, you know, you're just the odds of you finding somebody that's going to be a good fit uh, are, are pretty slim. So shrinks. Yeah, I, I went through all the, you know, all, all uh, you know, the work to you know, really identify what was important to me. Uh, so I had a real clear uh, mental vision of that. And uh, as I say, we were, we met on an early, uh, er, early version of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of online dating. Wow. So Marion, were you nervous about doing online dating? No, not at all, actually. Um, my story was the same way. I woke up after my second divorce and I said, I've got to do something different. And I went through a period of analyzing what my subconscious beliefs were, uh, how I felt about myself. And I started changing that. And I started approaching dating very differently, just like Mark did. I used to just go, oh, he's so attractive. I'm just really attracted to him. Let me go out and date him. And then my other parts of my mind and my um, values didn't get to kick in. I was just like, you know, glommed onto him. That's because I didn't have a deeper sense of worth at that time. I, I was successful in business, 
but on the realm of relationships, I wasn't. I was bound and determined to find someone that I could live the rest of my life with, that he would accept me for me. And I went step by step by changing those subconscious beliefs. But no, I was not scared at all because I did it smart. And this is what we teach people how to do it smart. I would just meet them, you know, for coffee. Mm-hmm. And well, I met one person first over the phone that sounded great, met him for dinner, never did it again. Because you can, you can say anything for five minutes for a cup of coffee mm-hmm. and leave and just say there's not a romantic connection. But when you're having a dinner, you're kind of stuck there. So, unless you yeah. excuse yourself, right, right, oh my gosh, yeah, that's always um the thing is about like meeting crazy people and you know knowing how to date online because I'm always telling my mom, well maybe you should you know go online and see, but she gets freaked out. But <laughs> I'll we give teach her- people how to do that. Really? Right. I mean, I think. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think, yes, I mean, the, the whole focus of, of what we do is, is teaching people to women. teaching women how to really identify what are these subconscious issues? What, what, what are the blocks? What are the fears? And uh, there's a, a lot of tools, which I, I really give the credit to Marion, um, that, that you can use to, to address those. And if you do, then you wind up approaching dating with a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. You approach it with a lot of clarity in terms of what you're, what you're looking for. Healthier boundaries, when to say no, how to say no. You know, we even teach you how to go out and, you know, take that first date, even questions on how to to ask those first date, you know, kind of thing. So it's not a big deal anymore. It just becomes, you become very, very secure within yourself. Yeah, but you know, here, here's the thing. If, if you don't do that work, what winds up happening is you just waste, well, yeah, but you, <laughs> only, you, you just waste a lot of time. Right. Because you, you go out and you're not really clear on what you want. So you kind of say, well, you know, maybe this person has potential, but you don't really know what potential means. And then four months, six months, eight months down the road, you realize, hey, this isn't working. Right. But that's four months, six months, eight months that you wasted. Right. So if you approach it from the standpoint of I'm clear on what I want, I'm clear on what I don't want, what I don't want, and then you go out, your your chances of one attracting a person who's going to be right for you, because we're real believers that the, your subconscious beliefs attract similar people. Mm-hmm. So, you know, your thoughts, are, life. your thoughts are like magnets, right? And yeah. they create. Yeah, so, I totally it, yeah, the whole thing's front end loaded. That's I guess what we're saying. Right. Yeah. So, all right. Whose idea was this? And how did the person whose idea was to create this type of program convince the other person? Or were you because you guys are probably like minded in certain ways, maybe it wasn't hard to convince, but who started this with the both of you? Well, Mark, you know, we've been retired and we both were getting kind of bored with being retired, but Mark was even more bored than I was. And I said, you know, you really need a business. And he had been in coaching and marketing and he looked online and said, you know, this is kind of interesting about, you know, online dating advice. And I'm going to speak for you, but you looked at some of the sites and they were just very superficial. You know, it's like sending flirty texts, blah, blah, blah. And then he sat down with me and he goes, because I wasn't even involved in it at first. And he goes, what would you do? And I said, well, if a client came to me, remember, I've been in you know private practice for over 30 years. I find out what their beliefs are, what their past relationships were, what kind of emotions they're holding on to. And I deal with all that subconsciously. I would teach them about their belief systems, how to have better self-esteem and better boundaries. And he goes, that's the program. Right. I mean, I, I wanted to do a program that focused on helping women find the love of their life. I mm-hmm. thought that that was just a very interesting niche. I've been an internet marketer for a long time. I <laughs> hadn't done any work in, in that space previously. And I thought it'd be really interesting. And like Marion said, you know, there's there's no shortage of, of information out there. The problem is that most of it is geared to, you know, you know, a high school girl or a girl that is just, you know, really just, just kind very of superficial. very superficial, you know, mm-hmm. how, how to dress alluringly, you know, what what text to send. And and I was thinking to myself, boy, you know, 
if you're a woman in your you know 30s 40s 50s you've got experience you've had some relationships in the past this stuff just can't possibly be helpful because they're not talking about being your authentic self right. or attracting somebody else that's your authentic self right you know and that just is not us we so, so then I, you know, so it's like marion said i you know i said to her how would you do it and she outlined it and i said well you know would this be a project that you'd be interested in collaborating on. And we, we work real well together. And uh, she said, sure. So uh, we, we spent uh, a few months doing research and we went out and reached out to a lot of women who were kind of in our target group and, you know, and got their thinking and their ideas and, and put it all together. And then we said, what, what we really want to do is, is we want to do something that we think is going to actually affect change. Mm -hmm. And so what we came up with is this four week program, which is uh, video based with a lot of interactive exercises that's then coupled with a group coaching. Mm -hmm. So- and, and the hypnotic parts too. Right, and, and hypnotic, yeah, and, and, and the, and, and the uh, uh, you know, the, the hypnotic uh, component to it as well. So, I mean, it's, it's a real comprehensive. You know, comprehensive package that includes a lot of learning modalities. And we wow. said, you know, this is something that we really think mm -hmm. if people uh, engage with, they're actually going to see some change. And that, that's really perfect what we wanted. for your mother. Yeah, absolutely okay. perfect for mom. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Seriously. Yeah. Because she'd understand what her beliefs are. She'd move through some of the emotions. I mean, yeah. the, she is like the perfect target market. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's how it all came about. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about some different areas that you guys cover. So tell us why smart women make foolish choices about men. What do you think the biggest problem is there? Well, I can answer that from, you know, working with a lot of women one-on-one, -on -one, I have had a lot of, just like I'm a smart woman, I've made foolish choices. Mm -hmm. The subconscious mind, if you don't understand that, it's, it's hard to understand why smart women would make stupid choices or foolish choices. The subconscious mind is 90% of your mind's power. And it's a big, dumb computer. You can have totally opposite beliefs subconsciously as you do intellectually. Intellectually, you go, yes, I wanna meet a great guy. I want him to be my, you know, my soulmate blah, blah, blah. But unconsciously, you may have, unbeknownst to you, beliefs that you're not good enough or they don't exist. And if you had a tug of war between nine people and one person, who do you think is going to win? It's going to be that nine people, the 90 over the 10. So when they learn how to understand what their beliefs are and change them, which they did in the one-on-one -on -one coaching, they understood that it wasn't because they weren't smart. It was because of old programming that they got maybe from growing up and seeing bad relationships or from society or from past relationships of their own. So as they changed that, they were able to accept and recognize a great relationship and actually attract it to them. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I always say that... Um, you can have a woman that is like at the top of her game, like has the best career, the best job, whatever. And I feel like a man of any stature can come along and break her down. Like, I just feel like I've seen that happen. What do you mean break her down? Like, you know, get into a relationship with her, um, maybe cheat, or maybe there's something else that goes on that just really disrupts all of the great things that she has going on in her life, life because the um, focus starts to shift from all of these things that she's built to now focusing in on these issues that are come up in her relationship. And you have to be really strong and really get yourself together to, to get out of that and come out you know, on the other side of it. What right? I'm gonna say is something totally different, that if you really change your subconscious beliefs, you were never going to attract a guy like that to begin with. Well, yeah, that's, that's the good thing about what you guys are doing, but unfortunately, not everybody is coming out of the gate thinking like that, right? Because a lot of women or even men, you know, do come out of situations where they have seen 
bad relationships, you know, maybe at home, maybe that's, you know, around them or whatever. And it's just a pattern or they get into situations where it's just negative, you know, and if it's so, a pattern, it's in the subconscious mm-hmm. and we teach them how to break that pattern from the subconscious, right? So that they don't make that choice in the future. Right. And that's what I love about this because it's really important because you want to be happy in your personal life. Right. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's great that you guys are educating people in that way so that they can make better personal decisions and, you know, have successful relationships. Oh yeah. So confident female mindsets that make men adore you, please tell us what the, what are those? (laughs) I think one of the things that a lot of the women that we work with who are by and large, you know, successful, confident women is that they feel that their confidence is, is, is going to be a turnoff. And interestingly, uh, confidence, now we're not talking about arrogance, uh, but, you know, self-confidence is an enormous turnoff for the kind of guy that they want to attract. I mean, one of the things that a turn on, not a turn off. I'm sorry, is a turn on to the type of guy that uh, that, that they want to attract. So, you know, when I met Marion, one of the things that really made me attracted to her was that she was successful. She knew herself. She was her authentic self, and she communicated what she wanted in in a way that was very, you know, forthright, very confident. Uh, but you know, also in a, in a way that was very engaging. And, and that was one of the things that I found enormously attractive because the flip side of it in terms of what guys don't like is you know, I would get women and they would all of a sudden you could start to see that they would change. They would you know, hesitate in terms of what they would say. They mince their words. You, you just really got the sense it was not their authentic self that was, was coming through. And that is, you know, that's kind of a turnoff. It's boring. Uh, so and you don't even know who that person is. Exactly. exactly. Well, and, and, you know, one of the things that I worked on, believe it or not, was that belief that will a man like and love me for me being a strong, confident woman? Because I had a niggling belief that I couldn't attract that kind of guy. So I had to actually face that subconscious belief I knew how to do it, which is what we teach. And I released it and let it go. And I start to date with like, if they don't like me for me, then I don't want them. And I'm going to be my authentic self. And that's what happens. You're your authentic self. You attract another authentic self that's in harmony with you. And it's not filled with drama. It's filled with joy right. and right. laughter. We laugh every freaking day. Right. And we've been together for 22 years. Right. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what I'm, I mean, again, I think it comes down to the fundamental um, thought that you guys have where it's, um, you know, you have to know yourself. And when you know yourself, you know what you want, what you don't want, you know who you are, and you won't change that to, you know, fit into some relationship that really isn't meant for you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, All right. So guys ghosting or even women, you know, ghosting you when you think things are going great and all of a sudden you don't get a call back or you're not getting text returns. Why do you think that happens? Well, the the simple answer that a lot of women expect is that they're really um, the guy is not uh, secure within themselves and they're they're afraid of intimacy. Mm -hmm. But the real answer that we give, in fact, we did a YouTube on it, that is surprising is that unconsciously, there is a part of the woman that probably doesn't feel worthy of having a man that can really be there for them. And when they change that belief about themselves, they'll find a man that doesn't ghost. Just as I found my husband who was right there, right from the beginning, I had two previous relationships, marriages, where they didn't show up emotionally. You know, they didn't, you know, ghost me on text. They just didn't show up in the relationship. And as I changed my inner belief about relationships and my worth, I was able to attract, you know, my husband that is absolutely present for me every day. 
You know, one of the main reasons why men ghost is because they have a fear of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, from a woman's standpoint, there isn't anything that she's going to be able to do no. to address that. No. Except for one thing, not attract guys who no. have a fear, fear of, intimacy. of intimacy. And so how, how do you do that? Well, interestingly, again, remember our theme, which is, you know, like attracts like. Your subconscious is like this big dumb magnet and you're gonna attract, you know, the other big dumb magnet. Yeah, and if you don't feel worthy, Exactly. So if, if you have fears of intimacy, if, if you have a fear that there's no good men left, that all men cheat, if you, if you got all that you know, junk going around, well, guess who you're going to attract? You're going to attract a similar guy. And that guy is, has all these negative beliefs about relationships. And then lo and behold, he goes to you. Well, you know, can't say that that was a big surprise. Again, it's different between the intellect, your beliefs, and the subconscious. Right. You're just going to keep that in mind. Right. So if you, if you work on that on the, on the front end, and if you, if, if you deal with that, and, and the good news is that it's, it's very doable. I mean, it requires, you know, some commitment. It requires persistence, persistence but there's nothing inherently difficult about it. There's a process. There's a roadmap. That's what we teach people. But if you do that, then all of a sudden your magnetic pull is very different because right. you've got that self-confidence. You've got your authentic self and you're going to attract someone who has that similar level of confidence, someone who isn't scared of intimacy, and guess what? The ghosting issue, well, that just that, goes away. Exactly. So tell me about some hidden relationship insecurities men have, and what do you know of any that women have as well? Well, it's just being human. I mean, people are afraid of being abandoned. They have old, you know, anger from relationships that they think they don't have, but they really do. They might come up as, you know, self-sabotaging behaviors or depression, things like that, or lack of motivation. Um, again, feeling not good enough, not worthy. I, I don't think it's so different than what guys go through. What do you think, honey? Right, I think it's, you know, a fundamental one, not the only one, but a fundamental one is will someone really like me for, for me. me and so many people just have this deep underlying belief that no they, they probably won't i'm probably going to have to change if i'm going to attract a guy who is going to like me or like me and you know to put it bluntly that's hogwash right yeah um you know it's if you can, if we can do the work on you, if we can get you to like yourself, if we can get you to, you know, celebrate uh, those things that are just totally awesome about you, you know, we build that up, then you're approaching the world from the standpoint of, you know, I've got a lot to offer. And I'm excited about finding someone who's going to, to recognize that and someone who's going to be a true partner for me. Yeah, I want to tell you a story. I just just started working with uh, a lady that she knew all this intellectually, everything we just told you, mm -hmm. and she's finally getting it because the way that I'm teaching it is the same way that we teach the course. That you know, she what she would do is like she'd read these things like you know, just be positive, you know, and and she would be stuffing down her feelings. And stuffing down the feelings, that's energy. That is going to pop up in some way. And it was popping up in over drinking. It was popping up in overspending and being angry in the relationship. And I said, well, this is how you start to change this subconscious uh, motion of anger regarding yourself. And it stems from the past. And this is how we teach you know, this course. You start to get a clarity on how to really be positive, not just like, you know, be in the mirror like, I'm positive, I'm positive, I'm positive. And inside, you're really not. You know, it's getting it deep inside yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I agree completely. Yeah, and in, in one talking session with her, she's made a major shift already. Good. Yeah, yeah, I really think it starts with you and you have to do the work. And that's what you guys are doing. You're helping people do the work 
so that they start to love themselves and know who they are. And then you can go out there and find who you're supposed to be with. Right. So um, I want you guys to share five relationship oh hell no's. Like, what are some, like, this is an oh hell no. If this happens, you got to like, no. <laughs> you got to say no, this is not going to work. Well, it's, it depends on the person, but for me, it was like, this is exactly the list, a, a list I did get from both of my marriages. Mm -hmm. You know, I, this is part of our course, even let's say what you absolutely will not tolerate. And I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, it would be any kind of abuse, mm -hmm. emotional abuse, putting people down in any way, shape or form, um, anger that's uncontrolled. You know, in the sense, everybody gets angry unless you have a lobotomy, but yelling is something I do not, I personally do not allow to be yelled at. So that's an absolute no. Somebody who's trying to control me. Again, they're not wanting me, my authentic self. Somebody who has very bad boundaries or you can't trust. Somebody who lies. There you go. Those are mine right there. Mark? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think those are, you know, th those are the big ones. I mean, I, to me, you know, the, the huge one is, is the boundary. You know, it's, you know, establishing what your boundaries are. First of all, really knowing what your boundaries Emotionally, are. Emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, in every single way. Exactly. And then making sure that those boundaries are respected. And if they're not, then it is, oh, hell no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tolerate that. Yeah. And I think those boundaries should be for everything that you said on that list, Marion. I think that should be everyone's. I'm sorry. Like, I don't care who you are, but you shouldn't, you know, allow someone to abuse you. You shouldn't, you know, allow the yelling or, you know, any of that. Stuff. So I agree. Well, Mark was talking about boundaries when we were first dating. <clears throat> I meditate and that is part of my authentic self. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and if somebody couldn't handle me meditating, then it's like, bye, you know, <clears throat> but he never met a meditator. <laughs> and so I know we were going to go out somewhere and I said, well, first I got to meditate. And he goes, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? And I said, well, I've got to meditate. And he goes, really? You don't have to do that. I said, yes, I do. And if you don't like it, too bad. He goes, oh, okay. <laughs> goes, okay. <clears throat> I, 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 you know, I, I'm, you know, very respectful. And, and <laughs> just I did never it. met but, anybody. But now she didn't tell you the end of the story. You know, yeah. I, I thought kind of like when you meditated, you weren't, you know, you, you weren't really conscious at all. So I brought out the vacuum cleaner. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, I go, what are you doing? <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's been an education, you know, we're, we're always learning. Right. Have you tried you know, meditating? Meditate, so oh, I was about to say, do you do it too now? Yeah, no, meditate. Yeah. yeah no, I, do, I never so. forced him <laughs> no. ever. No. That's awesome, though. I yeah. love it. All right, guys. So tell everyone where they can find out about your course and where they can connect with you guys. Go ahead. Uh, go to createtheloveofyourlife.com. Createtheloveofyourlife.com. That's got uh, all the information about the uh, uh, about the program. Uh, you can also connect with us on uh, YouTube, Facebook, all the all the social stations. We got a lot of, you know, free uh, free videos that are on uh, on our YouTube channel, which is create the love of your life. Uh, so we're offering a free consultation too. So that when they go on that site, they can actually have a free consultation with me. Right. Right. So if you want to have a chance to talk to Marion, talk a little bit about you know, your own particular situation, find out more about the course, you know, about the course, how we work with clients, you know, we're, we're, we're happy to you know, spend some time with you right. and uh, you know, see if we're, uh, we're a good fit. I love it. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show and telling us about what you guys are doing to help people find the love of their life. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, thanks for having us.